In the world of longevity and biohacking, there's a ton of hype around different molecules. But what if one of them really was a kind of master switch for your body? Today, we are talking all about a peptide called GHKCU and the fascinating and kind of complicated science behind its massive promises. All right, let's get into it. I mean, that's the billion dollar question, isn't it? Can we find one single thing that helps our bodies act younger right down to the cellular level? With GHKCU, that is exactly what so many people are hoping for. So why all the excitement? Well, this chart pretty much says it all. When you're around 25 years old, your blood plasma is swimming in this stuff, about 200 nanograms per milliliter. But by the time you hit 60, it plummets to just 80. That is a huge drop, and it's exactly why scientists are so obsessed with figuring out what happens when we start putting it back. And that obsession has led to some absolutely incredible claims about what this little molecule can do. It's built this reputation as a kind of cellular fountain of youth. But before we get to those wild claims, what exactly is it? At its core, GHKCU is actually pretty simple. It's a tripeptide, which just means three amino acids, glycine, histidine, and lysine, all linked together. This GHK part loves to grab onto copper, which is where the CU comes from. And the key thing is, it's a totally natural part of our bodies. Okay, so what do people say it does? Let's kick things off with one of its most famous claims, helping reverse hair loss, supposedly by boosting blood flow right to the scalp. It's also a superstar in the world of skincare. I mean, it's been studied for decades for tissue remodeling and healing wounds. Seriously, go check the label on some of those high-end anti-aging creams. You'll probably find GHKCU right there in the ingredients list. But this, this is where the claims go from interesting to mind-blowing. One major study found that GHK can actually reverse the expression of 70% of the genes involved in a signature for an aggressive metastatic colon cancer. Think about that. It's like it tells those harmful genes to just quiet down. And yeah, the list just keeps going. The sources claim it dials down major inflammation, it acts as a potent antioxidant fighting off damage, it helps bones heal, and it promotes the growth of new blood vessels. It really sounds like it does a bit of everything. Now with claims that big, you know scientists are going to put them under the microscope. So let's see what happens when GHKCU goes from popular theory into a serious lab setting. The biggest claim of all is that GHKCU can fight back against age-related decline. So, a really recent study from the University of Washington decided to test exactly that. So here's the setup. The researchers took old mice, we're talking 20 months old, which is getting up there for a mouse, and for eight weeks they gave them daily doses of GHKCU up the nose. Afterwards, they analyzed their brain tissue, looking not just at the cells, but at the deep genetic level, which genes were being switched on or off. They were hoping for some clear-cut answers, you know? But what they actually found was a much, much more complicated and, frankly, surprising reality. The results were not what anyone was expecting. Okay, let's start with the good news. The study did confirm some of the hype. In both the male and female mice, the GHKCU treatment lowered the number of reactive astrocytes. Those are basically stressed-out brain cells that can cause a lot of harmful inflammation. So reducing them, that's a definite win. But when they dug deeper and looked at the gene expression, the whole story got a lot stranger. The results were just packed with contradictions and puzzles that really challenged what we thought we knew. So check this out. This is one of the biggest head scratchers. Everyone thought GHK would boost DNA repair. I mean, that's one of its big claims. But in the study, they saw the exact opposite. In the male mice, the genes for DNA repair were actually turned down significantly, a totally counterintuitive result. And it got even weirder when they looked at inflammation on a genetic level. Here, the effects were completely split by sex. In the female mice, GHKCU actually ramped up key inflammatory pathways. But in the male mice, it did the exact opposite. It turned them down. The same molecule, two totally different results. This table really lays out how complex this is. You can see that wild difference in inflammation. But then look at MTR, a huge aging pathway. It was turned down in both, which is what you want to see for anti-aging. And DNA repair was down in both. Then, hormone response was turned up in both. It's a real mixed bag of signals. And look, you don't have to take my word for it. The lead author of the study, Manuela Rosenfeld, said it very clearly. The effects of GHKCU are not one size fits all. The sex of the subject can dramatically change how the body responds. So, where does that leave us? We have this incredible promise on one side, 
and then this complex, puzzling scientific data on the other. What's the real takeaway here? Let's just put it all side by side. You've got the promise, the hype, of fighting cancer genes, reducing inflammation, and regenerating tissue. But the scientific puzzle, the reality, shows us it can also turn down DNA repair, turn up inflammation in females, and that its effects are super dependent on who is taking it. So I think the best way to think about this is that GHKCU isn't just a simple tool. It's more like a master switchboard operator. It can walk up to our DNA and start flipping thousands of genetic switches, turning some up and turning others way down. And that means it is not some simple youth button that you can just press and expect the same result every time. The outcome, whether it's good, bad, or neutral, depends entirely on which switches get flipped in which direction. And that can be completely different for males versus females, or even in different tissues in your body. Look, GHKCU is clearly a powerful key that interacts with our fundamental genetic code. The science shows it has immense potential, but also immense complexity. The question that's left isn't if it unlocks anything, but for any one of us, what door is it really going to open?